Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Introducing Hover 2. Rise Tech announces the programmable Tello EDU drone. And Uniform Law Commission sets its sights on drone legislation. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. Zero Zero Robotics has released early details for their new 4K-capable Hover 2. That follows in the footsteps of the pivotal Hover platform released two years ago. Hover 2 introduces an entirely new drone experience with innovations like optical radar and cutting-edge AI that enables obstacle avoidance and tracking features. The company is raising money for development and production of the aircraft on Kickstarter. You may select between four preset shots with auto frame, allowing Hover 2 to fly into position, frame, and capture the shot with a tap of a button. Choosing between waist up, full body, backdrop, and bird's eye modes. OmniFollow keeps you in the frame from any angle. Unlike traditional follow modes, Hover 2 can follow you from the front, back, side, or switch between all three in the same shot. The optical radar is always focused on the direction of the movement, while the main camera is focused on you. Meaning Hover 2 can avoid obstacles, even while flying sideways or backwards. Hover 2's compact foldable design allows for ultra portability and is available in a classic black version. Blast off mode controls the drone from up to three miles away when paired with a blast off controller. Aerially enhanced propeller guards offer improved aerodynamics and increases flight time up to 23 minutes. In the next show minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. The FAA published a rule for small UAS in June 2016 which allows it to issue waivers. Given the significant safety implications of integrating UAS into the NAS and an increase in the number of both requested and approved UAS waivers, the DOT OIG initiated an audit of FAA's approval and oversight processes for UAS waivers. The OIG found that the FAA has experienced difficulties obtaining sufficient information managing the volume of requests, and communicating with applicants. As a result, FAA's Flight Standards Office has disapproved 73% of operational waiver requests. The Japan Post Company has initiated a pilot program to deliver documents by drones in Fukushima. The first such delivery took place last Wednesday, following an easing of regulations in Japan in September intended to help deal with labor shortages in the transportation industry. The company is initially using drones to transport its own documents and advertisements between two post offices in the northern part of the prefecture. The service will be evaluated to determine if it can eventually be used to carry regular mail. Fluidity Technologies has been named as CES 2019 Innovation Awards honoree for Safety Aviator, the first single-handed precision flight drone controller with advanced camera interfaces built right into the device. The announcement was made during CES Unveiled New York, an invite-only tech event bringing together top media, exhibitors, and industry leaders for a sneak peek of the products and trends expected at CES 2019. The Korean Ministry of Science and ICT have announced that a new lithium metal ion battery has been developed by the KISS researchers led by Dr. Won Il Cho. The developed battery possesses twice the energy density that of conventional lithium ion batteries, 
which are commonly used in smartphones and portable computers. The developed lithium metal ion batteries are capable of maintaining 80% of the initial performance after going through more than 1,200 charge and discharge cycles. That was our John Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Rise Tech has launched Hello EDU, a programmable drone that expands the educational opportunities with support for additional programming languages and drone swarms. Tello EDU is available from DJI and Apple Online and in select Apple retail stores. Tello EDU can be programmed with Scratch, Swift, and Python, offering options for beginners and advanced coders. It comes packaged with four mission pads, physical waypoints that drones can recognize and respond to. Tello EDU also allows users to access the video stream data and discover more advanced controls like basic gesture controls by coding. There is still plenty of focus on fun. While it weighs just 3 ounces, the Tello EDU has an HD camera and flying modes for tricks. Tello EDU also has a dedicated app with virtual missions. Using a basic scratch editor or the Tello EDU app, users can create missions through block programming. In Apple Swift Playgrounds app, users can find telespace travel lessons that will introduce users to a wider range of coding concepts and activities as they play the role of an astronaut exploring space. TeleEDU will retail for $129 and comes with one drone, two sets of spare propellers, four emission pads, one battery, and a USB charging cable. A group of lawyers will meet in Detroit in the near future, and one of the items on their agenda could radically alter the way drones are regulated. Called the Uniform Law Commission, it is made up of attorneys appointed by state governments to craft model legislation for consideration by state legislatures across the country. They are currently working on a draft, tort law relating to Drones Act, they claim will protect privacy but does not recognize FAA's jurisdiction over airspace. The ULC cites U.S. v. Cosby, in which the Supreme Court said that if the landowner is to have full enjoyment of the land, he must have exclusive control of the immediate reaches of the enveloping atmosphere. Otherwise, buildings cannot be erected, trees cannot be planted, and even fences cannot be run. The principle is recognized when the law gives a remedy in case of overhanging structures are erected on adjoining land. The landowner owns at least as much of the space above the ground as they can occupy or use in connection with the land. The proposed model legislation would make any drone flying lower than 200 feet above the ground or improvement built upon the surface of the land guilty of aerial trespass. We'll keep you updated. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA John Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program are Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. More information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.